The Wild West is full of colorful characters, but most of the most well-known figures from this time are white. Sadly, it's all too easy to overlook the impact that African Americans had in shaping the American West. But there were many black Americans who were living fascinating lives at this time, and one of the most interesting is Bass Reeves, who worked as a lawman for more than 30 years. Like most black Americans before the Civil War, Reeves was born into slavery. His enslaver, George Reeves, joined the Confederate Army. Luckily for Bass, he was able to gain his freedom during the conflict when he and George got into a fight during a particularly contentious card game. Realizing the consequences of what he'd just done could be dire, Bass fled into what was then called Indian Territory in present-day Oklahoma. When the war was over, he moved to Arkansas and became a farmer. In 1875, the federal judge of the so-called Native Territories asked the U.S. Marshal to deputize 200 men. The Marshal, James Fagan, knew of Reeves and that he'd spent time with the American Indians. When hired, Bass Reeves became the first black deputy west of the Mississippi. With his knowledge of several tribal languages, Reeves was an invaluable member of the organization. Reeves was notoriously sharp, excelling not only in tracking down outlaws, but also serving as a detective. He was also ambidextrous, being able to accurately fire his pistol with both hands. This made him well respected with his peers and greatly feared by the men that he was tracking down. Over the course of his career, Reeves arrested more than 3,000 outlaws, including one of his own sons. This remains the record for the most arrests in U.S. Marshal history. He was confirmed to have killed 12 fugitives, including two who tried to ambush him while he was trying to find them. It's suspected he may have killed more, as the Western Territories were a very dangerous place to live and work at that time. In 1907, Oklahoma officially became a state, and Reeves was transferred into the local police department of the growing city of Muskegee, where he served another two years before age and illness forced him to retire. He was 69 years old. Reeves died early the next year of a kidney disease, leaving behind a family and a powerful legacy of fighting for justice. He was one of the rare men who was friendly with both the U.S. government and the local American Indians, and one of his descendants would become the first black man appointed as a federal judge in 1972. Passionate, brave, and cunning, Reeves was a man with a rare combination of skills, and he made life safer for those living during one of the most dangerous periods of American history.